Welcome. We're going to talk today about package URLs and version range specification and how they can make uh, better identifiers for uh, dependencies and vulnerabilities. Hey, I am Nitik Vijay, and uh, I am very passionate about open source, Linux, and InfoSec. I have been associated with Vulnerable Code for over a year now, and uh, I'm a co maintainer at Vulnerable Code and Universe. You can contact me at the following addresses written over here. That's it. And I am Philippe Ombredan. I'm the maintainer of uh, Scan Code and About Code projects, and co creator of package URLs. Among other, among other other projects, I'm a long time contributor to free and open source software, and co-founder of CTO of NextB, which is a software company that makes Deja Code and is the primary sponsor of, of About Code. You can find me on IRC and, and on email. I signed off on one of the largest legion of lines of code in the kernel, so I'm very good at deleting code. I'm not sure if I'm as good as that for, for writing code, but I hope. So our agenda today. The problem is that we have more and more free and open source software dependencies, which is great. I mean, we can build software better, faster, and more efficiently, but we also have more bugs, more bugs, more vulnerabilities. So we're going to see how we can deal with this uh, the difficulty to identify package is one key topic. Uh, understanding resolution and dependency resolution is difficult too. Uh, understanding ranges of vulnerabilities uh, or range of versions as they apply to a package is, is a problem too. Generally speaking, I wish versioning was hard, not as hard as it is, but it is. So we're going to explore solutions with uh, what we propose today, which is Perl and version range. So as I said, things are getting more and more complex. Uh, we can build applications uh, like uh, we take Lego bricks and assemble them together. And if I compare the volume of packages, number of packages we were using a couple of years ago, uh, it's really an explosion. We're, we have 10 to 100 times more. Not only that, but also we, we have complex stacks. Um, we are systematically mixing multiple application uh, package technologies and ecosystems, but also system packages. And if you think about container deployments, you may be running a part of Alpine Linux and, and Ubuntu and Debian and SUSE in a single stack across multiple containers on the host operating system. We also have uh, many unstated dependencies across all these uh, ecosystem and package types that we use. Uh, and it's very difficult, actually, the, the boundaries uh, between the dependencies are difficult to express, say, how can I tell that I depend as an application on a certain say database or application server all this is complicated and because of the explosion and this complexity we have more bugs and vulnerabilities for sure uh, because of the volume also it's difficult to automate so how can we deal with some of this complexity the first way is to provide a bunch of you know read me instructions say hey you know uh, here are my installation prerequisites. Go and install this and that. That's working okay. Another approach which had been uh, uh, seen used in some of the big tech companies is to replace all the package managers with a single one to rule them all. And typically with a monorepo and a build system which is going to build everything from source and essentially replaces uh, uh, package management and provide a dependency management system. Another approach is to use general purpose package manager uh, that are emerging, an example of SPAC um, coming from uh, uh, the world of uh, high performance computing or Conda 
uh, scientific computing are good example of general purpose package managers that address the needs of, of many, both system and applicative uh, level issues. And finally, functional package managers, such as uh, uh, Nix and NixOS and UX, which is based on Nix, which provides a way to uh, replace the dependency and package management system across uh, the entire stack, both system and application. Not to forget containers, which is a way to uh, also mix system and application in a frozen environment, which we call a container. So it's difficult. There's many standards, many package management. We need one more to rule them all. And that sounds like a, a bad idea, but actually uh, it's not so much adding a new standards, it's having a way to accommodate all these other standards. In practice, it proves that even though it feels ridiculous, it's actually a good thing to have something which can unify different standards uh, to identify packages. Meet Perl, so package URL. The, the problem we've tried to solve here is that each ecosystem, as we said, has its own convention. There's so many standards. A package could, could, could be called file. It's a Ruby gem. Or it could be called file, and it's a Debian package which has nothing to do with the Ruby gem in question. And so uh, we're trying to find a way to define an expressive string, which is obvious and minimalist, which can allow to uh, identify and talk about the package across these different conventions and ecosystem. Um, good example, so say you have an NPM. So it's a, it's a URL, it starts with a PKG scheme. Then you have the package type, in this case, NPM, the name at the version. So it's very obvious if you've been using NPMs, uh, uh, foobar at 12.3.1 is something you use all the time because that's the convention to actually uh, talk about a NPM package. In the same way, we can talk about the version 1.11 of Django, on, which is a Python package. And based on this string, I can really figure out and go find, fetch everything about this package. Uh, this is something that started with uh, uh, originally scan code and vulnerable code. Uh, with the help of uh, many other uh, organizations and projects, it's now adopted in, in many places. Uh, it's used as a de facto standard in uh, several projects of the Linux Foundation, including the open source vulnerability database schema, the OSSF. It's been adopted by Cyclone DX at OWASP and Dependency Track and uh, uh, OSS Index and the type and so on and so on. It's, it's, it's really emerging as a simple de facto standard, which is a minimalist lingua franca to talk about packages. And we have libraries in, in many different languages uh, uh, that have been contributed over time. It's even been recommended by the NTIA as an alternative uh, package identifier for software bill of material, SBOMs. Okay, if we look a bit at other approaches, um, the, the key, key benefit here is improved readability and obviousness. If you think on the left, I'm not picking up specifically on CPE, but that's one of the things we're, one of the, the existing thing we're, we're trying to support and, and improve on. CPE has this, they, they have a lot of stars, so a lot of placeholders. Uh, the problem here is that if I look at these here, PyPy FeedPasser 4.1, I can know exactly where to go and where to find the source code. 
here, the convention of the CP doesn't tell me much. I could search a Mark P. Greenfield parser and it would be hard pressed to actually find exactly whether it's on PyPy or else, and, and that makes it difficult. Same thing here, uh, log4j, there's a lot of different builds of this. Uh, with package URLs, you have something which is much more precise and accurate and focused on, on, on the code that you find in your code base. The key point is that uh, we're trying to avoid any kind of uh, arbitrary assignments. And instead you can infer the package URL from what you observe in your code base. You can check your Maven dependencies or PyPy dependencies and it's, be, it's going to be pretty obvious what you have there. Um, of note, um, the National Vulnerability Database version five, the new API is essentially adding an ecosystem uh, so it's not exactly Perl, but it becomes very close to Perl. The OSV is also supporting Perl uh, as well as an ecosystem there. And some in some some uh, reference, and very proud of that in the news, where um, uh, Stephen Hendrick from the Linux Foundation was saying that uh, package URLs are are eventually supported and and become one of the uh, leading data formats uh, and way to identify vulnerabilities. Um, very, 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 very encouraging and um, was a couple of months ago. And um, so that's the first thing. We can name a package now. What about versions? Ritik? Well, uh, we talked about uh, packages and uh, it was a tough journey to name packages. And naming everything is a tough journey. But now we can with the help of package URLs. But what about versions? Versions are tough. And uh, how do we name them? Uh, any idea do you have? Well, why do we need it, first of all? We need it for resolving package dependencies. Every dependency uh, for a package comes with a range of uh, possible versions. It could be greater than two or something, something like that. But an example would be, I need a package something and uh, a version or the greater versions. Now, a very simple problem here arises when we talk about, do we want inclusive of 2.0 or exclusive of 2.0? That's a very simple issue, but it could manifest itself as different ways. Now that's uh, just the dependency and that is used by package managers and such. We are also interested in uh, vulnerabilities and uh, vulnerable versions. Security is important, and we need to take care of uh, the affected vulnerable versions that we get in the adversaries. So how do we deal with those version ranges? Everyone publishes them with uh, a pinch of difference, and which makes the entire, uh, entire thing very different. Well, version number should be very, very simple to understand. When I say about, uh, let's say, Django, that's from PyPy. It's a very simple, very obvious. In package URL, as we saw earlier, it was as simple as writing PyPy slash Django. That was the main hotspot over there. And it is simple, boring as a URL, and we know everything about it. But what about version numbers? They, they should be very uh, simple as well. They should not have a lot of different types of uh, operators, like uh, sometimes they'll have a caret or a tilde or maybe an exclamation mark. Well, everyone comes up with a different type of operator for their versioning system. And it supports their ecosystem, but it does not, does not support the environment as a whole. Now, what if we could express it in a very universal way? Well, uh, now you'll go back to that XKCD that uh, Philip just showed you, that we are going to come up with a new versioning scheme We'll tell you about this is the thing that you have to use. But no, we are not talking about a new versioning scheme. We are talking about something that could accommodate all of them, that that roots all of them, that does not replace all of them. Well, first of all, we can use package URL, and uh, that solves our problem of naming packages across uh, different ecosystems. 
and then we come up with a new verse that is a version range specification and it holds for ranges. But for every package URL, we have uh, an ecosystem, the package type, the namespace, and uh, so on and so forth. And then we come up with an exhaustive simplified comparator set that is uh, all of these shown over here. So here we make a promise that we won't come up with a new, uh, new comparator. We won't say that there is a carrot anymore. We say that these are the uh, comparators and that's all. And uh, we have a very specific version comparison that is based on ecosystem. So if you are in node symbol, if you use the words greater than, you will get the greater than that is equivalent comparator in the node symbol ecosystem. And we make the transition inside the specification itself. Well, it helps us to uh, figure out the dependency and the vulnerable ranges, both of them. So what happens? So what can we uh, come up with this? Maybe a universal package manager. Who knows? Maybe uh, a lot of other things. Well, before exploring what are the future scopes, let's have a look at the specification itself. That is the worst specification. Well, the problem was very obvious that everyone comes up with a new convention to specify version ranges. Well, uh, we need something very simple and uh, a string that is very minimal, very uh, easy to uh, write, easy to use, easy to include in your code base, and it should be compatible to Perl as well. Now, keeping all of this in mind, we have the verse specification. We come up with a verse, and that is a URL scheme, so that we will be registering soon enough. So that is verse, and uh, we provide the namespace, that is npm, and then uh, the version number, so package name and the version number. So it's a uh, one, two, three, and then the uh, constraints. Now the constraints are limited to what verse supports, and those constraints would get uh, transformed into the ecosystem specific constraints. Now we started with this uh, vulnerable code in the universe library, and we have a Python implementation ready already. You are welcome to look at the universe, that is universal versioning scheme. And uh, it has already been used in Cyclone DS and Scan. We can pave uh, a very clear path to universal dependency resolution. And that would uh, pave a path for the universal package manager, which is uh, which is one single thing that is missing to make Linux as uh, the uh, desktop of the new era. You know, because every distro comes with a different package manager, so that could potentially solve this issue as well. And of course, vulnerability processing would be very very simple. So we talked about verse and its specification. So well, we don't claim to be the single solution in the market. There are others, and uh, we'll have a look at them. It could be something like a single syntax for everything, like CP. We can have everything as a symbol. Or, uh, but uh, again, a uh, solution like this enforces one single standard to uh, remove all of the standards. That brings us back to getting uh, one new standard, that is 15 standards, then there were 14 standards already present, and that is not a good thing. So uh, over here as well, we see that verse accommodates every other standard. It does not uh, outdates every other standard. When we put it all together, we get uh, a uni mostly universal package naming scheme with the help of Perl, and a mostly universal version range scheme that is worse. So we have both the problems completely tackled for uh, storing vulnerability ranges, to evaluate them, to find out uh, the vulnerable packages in a list of dependencies, a multi package installer for all the ecosystems. That is finally every Linux distro could be one and could, could, could agree on uh, 
one type of uh, installation and that is simpler and uh, a very simple dependency de declaration over here and this would be an incremental approach we will go slowly one by one accommodate everyone and uh, not replace everything so as of now we have uh, the implementations in the universe library for a few version ranges and uh, we are looking forward to having a lot of uh, different implementations very soon now that's all about how it works but uh, is it already out there is any, does anyone even bother to use coil and burst yes they do all of these uh, great organizations spdx osp csaf section ds and of course vulnerable pool is already using coil and burst and it has been helpful throughout the entire development among us. Now, jumping to the conclusion, well, naming anything is a very different. Even if you have a cute cat, you the, the, the name uh, sticks for the entire time. And uh, it has to be consistent. It has to, uh, it has to be something that is easy to remember. So, we solved the uh, naming software packages with package URLs, and uh, that is uh, just as easy as it could get. And uh, the version range rotation could be solved by, of course, worse, the version range specifiers. The vulnerability identifiers have been solved by CVEs, and it has been very, very important. It, it really helps uh, with the categorization of uh, the vulnerabilities. And then the one control system, so, have VCS URLs. So over here we have a complete set that we can use to build a very nice vulnerability resolver that uh, works across ecosystems that, uh, that could improve by itself, that could uh, support a lot of uh, different types of adversaries and uh, so on and so forth. Now we are not done yet. There is still a lot that we would like to uh, continue to. And uh, if you would like to help, you can, of course, uh, contribute code, time, documentation, cash, whatever uh, you are familiar with. So have a look at that. Have a look at our projects under github.com slash package URL and projects under about code and next week. We are working towards making the uh, soft vulnerability the version ranges, the software, the packages, an easy thing to handle. Yes, and in, in addition to this, uh, you can check specifically the, the version range and package URL specification, as well as, as the, the libraries. We have implemented many languages. Uh, we are also uh, preparing a, a webinar specifically on vulnerable code which is where Perl and Verse were, were born and that makes extensive use of uh, Perl and Verse that will be announced uh, in, in this uh, conference. Uh, there's a separate presentation on, on the vulnerable code that you can follow. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Bye now.